In this lesson, I'll be going over the calculations for an AC circuit, and I'll also be connecting it to graphs for an AC circuit. So if you don't know why graphs of an AC circuit, AC generator graphs, look the way that they look, you need to go and watch those videos in this playlist. First of all, just remember that the direction of induced current, so the current that is created in the coil, that direction of the current changes, it reverses, it alternates with every half turn of the coil. Okay, so it reverses after the coil moves through the vertical position. It's called alternating current. And you'll remember that it produces a graph that can look something like this graph or like this graph. It just depends on how the coil starts, which position it starts in. You can see over here, my first picture, my coil is in the vertical position. So if I have to show you with my hands, if my magnets were located on either side of my coil, Okay, so here's a magnet and here's a magnet. My And the field lines are going like this. My coil, okay, would be standing like this. When it's like this, the induced EMF is zero. Then when it rotates and it is now like this, flat, horizontal, parallel with the field, then the voltage is at a maximum. So that would be at this position over here, maximum voltage. Then it rotates back to a vertical position and it's zero and so on. I went through this in a lot more detail in previous videos in this playlist, so go check it out. The point that I'm trying to make is with an alternating current graph, this represents one full rotation. You will see that the induced EMF, remember EMF, induced EMF, that's your voltage. We refer to it as V, voltage. It reaches a maximum in one direction. So this would be the maximum in one direction. Then, so remember that where I'm saying it reaches a maximum, that's when it's lying like this, parallel to the field, if my magnets are like this. Then it rotates, then it's like this. When it's like this, it corresponds to this part of the graph. That's where voltage is zero. Then, so now it's currently here, then it rotates again. You see it's flat again, it's parallel again, it's horizontal again. Then it reaches a maximum, but in the opposite direction. It's still a maximum. The reason it's negative is because it has reversed direction. The current has reversed direction. So what's important to understand for the calculations is that this value over here, essentially the crest or the peak of my curve, I refer to that as V max. This one over here is also V max. It's got a negative because it's in the opposite direction. So just like we have a graph for voltage or EMF induced versus time, we can have the same graph or same, it looks the same, but it's for current. Current measured in amperes. Remember voltage is measured in volts. There it is, volts. Current measured in amperes versus time. This is your maximum current. And so is this. And here my current is zero. And if you've noticed, this graph, depending again on how the generator starts, its starting position, but it basically represents, it has a shape of a sine wave, okay, a sin graph. AC, EMF, and current strength are at a maximum at the peak of the wave. So we call it Vmax and Imax, respectively. Then if, if you had to think about it, okay, the maximum voltage, that's not the voltage that gets delivered to our houses. What gets delivered to our houses is a lower voltage. It's essentially sort of like the average value, if I can say it like that. But if you put your thinking caps on, if you think like a math person, you would say, well, ma'am, if this V max, let's say it's five, and this V max is negative five, then isn't the average just zero? But that wouldn't make sense. How is the average that is going to be supplied to our house, our main supply, how is that zero? So to combat this, we speak about a term called VRMS. You also do get IRMS. And I put here in quotation marks that it's like the average. It's more like a useful average. So RMS gives a measure of how much useful energy the AC voltage delivers. And this is what's interesting. The RMS value is the DC equivalent. Okay, so basically the RMS value, it is basically like the amount of DC voltage that would deliver the same power. If that confuses you, it's, all, it's okay. Just think of it more as an average. If you take a look at this graph over here, they illustrate it a little bit better with a dotted line showing you where more or less VR RMS would be, as well as giving you the formula to calculate VRMS. So VRMS is equal to the maximum voltage V max divided by square root two. Now, the reason it is divided by square root two, it's 
very complicated. It's got to do with doing the root mean square calculation on a sine function because you know that the graph is a sine graph. And it's basically a full mathematical integration that you do not need to worry about. But you just need to know how to calculate it for now at this level. And they represent VRMS as being more or less this voltage over here. So this voltage value. You can see that it's lower than the maximum voltage. Now, what you see in red, those are the official definitions that you need to know for VRMS and IRMS. V voltage, RMS, and RMS current. And as you can see, they say the RMS voltage or potential difference is the AC potential difference. It only applies to AC circuits, not DC. So it's the AC potential difference, which dissipates the same amount of energy as an equivalent DC potential difference. So... Basically, when we deal with normal circuits, normal DC circuits, this is stuff that we've been doing since grade 10, we make use of these formulae. So we work out potential difference, or we work out current. Now when working with an AC circuit, we need a DC equivalent. And the root mean square values are basically an equivalent of the DC values. Okay. So not to freak you out with all the formulas at once, this is the formula for calculating VRMS. Remember, this is measured in volts. V max is measured in volts. This is dividing by the square root of two. I RMS is measured in amperes. I max is measured in amperes. So we've discussed this one and we've discussed this one. Then the other ones that, that appear on your formula sheet, I think maybe it would be useful for me to show you your formula sheet. So we spoke about that one and we spoke about that one. You can see that they will also ask you or require you to work with average power. These formulae enable me to work out average power. And if you take a look at my comparison, we've worked out power before in grade 10 and 11 using normal circuits. So we basically use very similar formulae. But for example, say I want to make use of this formula. Okay, a formula like this, but it's an AC circuit. We work out the average power. Remember, it's an average power because both the voltage and the current values fluctuate. They go to a maximum in one direction and then zero and then a minimum in the other direction. So we have to also calculate an average power. So to get average power, if I want to use this formula, you see they say P is equal to V times I. Okay, now because we're doing an AC circuit, we don't just use V, we use V RMS. And we don't just use I, we use I, RMS. And what is nice with a lot of these calculations, and I want to use the next formula as an example, is that, for example, here, if I want to calculate the resistance, you should all know where that formula comes from. It comes from grade 10 and 11, Ohm's law, R is equal to V over I, or you may be used to seeing it as V is equal to I times R. Okay, now I'm just applying it in an AC circuit. Take note how I'm using VRMS divided by IRMS. And it's also important to note that if I don't have VRMS, I'm allowed to use VMAX divided by IMAX. But this is super important. This is all good. VMAX divided by IMAX. This is all good. VRMS divided by IRMS. But what I'm writing now, what's going to follow is not good. Why is this an issue? Because my top value is a maximum and the other one is the useful average the rms you can't do that it needs to be max at the top max at the bottom or rms at the top rms at the bottom but not a mix okay all these formulae like i said are given to you on the formula sheet with the exception of this one that one is not given to you take a look it's not there so how do you know how are you going to remember it well it's just the normal r is equal to v over i but you are allowed to use rms and RMS, or you can use VMAX and IMAX. So this one is just one you're going to have to keep in your back pocket and remember. I'm going to be doing three examples with you, starting with the easier one, working our way up to a slightly more complicated one. Let's go. Remember, pause the screen, try it yourself. So I would first take a screenshot of the formulae or a picture or write them down, then try it, pause the screen, unpause it and do it with me. Okay, so I've got the South African mains supply 220 volts. Now, remember what I mentioned earlier, what the mains supply to our house. The stuff that comes to our house, it's not a maximum, it's a VRMS. It's more like the useful average, okay? AC, alternating current. They want me to now calculate the peak voltage Vmax. They're either going to call it peak voltage or they're going to call it maximum voltage or Vmax. So this formula, of course, makes the most sense. So you write your blank formula first 
And I think it's worth me mentioning how important it is to write your formulas just as they appear on the formula sheet. So if you have to be messy and in an exam write your formula like this, you write your RMS a bit too big, they're going to give you zero because RMS is a subscript. It's supposed to be written small like that. You also can't leave it out. You're going to get zero. So we know that the V RMS is 220. V max is what I'm looking for. And I'm dividing by square root two. How do you solve for V max? How do you get V max by itself? You multiply both sides by square root two. So you're going to say 220 multiplied by square root two. And I get 311 comma one three volts remember your unit or you don't get that mark so this would potentially be with three marks in an exam of course you need your unit round off to at least two decimals in this question i'm going to ask you the following calculate vrms now they've given me a volt a graph that is showing the output voltage of the generator for one cycle of rotation of the coil remember time is on the x-axis so it takes 0.1 seconds for the coil to rotate fully okay from start to end. Now, all they want is VRMS. From the graph, you need to know that this value over here is our V max. Note how obviously it's the same value over here, but it's a negative. So you write your formula first, you substitute. Note, don't put the negative in there. Think of the negative as more meaning in the opposite direction. When you do that on your calculator, you're going to get 50 square root 2. But remember, your final answer needs to be written as a decimal to at least two decimal places. Also note, the VRMS must always be lower than VMAX. If it's not, you've made a mistake. Then question three, I hope you're trying these by yourself first. So it says a certain AC generator produces a peak current, I max, of 6,43 amperes when connected to electric heater. And now they give you the resistance of the heater. First question, calculate the RMS current. So they're giving me the maximum. They want the RMS. I'm going to make use of this formula. So you write your blank formula down first. You substitute your values in, so 6,43 divided by square root 2, I get 4,55. Remember, that's measured in amperes. Amperes. Next question, calculate the peak voltage output of the generator. Now, when reading that question, peak voltage, you need to know, okay, peak voltage is V max. You see how they don't say V max? You need to know that. Now, your first thought might be like, okay, cool, I'm going to use this formula. And then you write it down and you get ready. And then you think, oh, no, I can't use this formula. Why not? Yes, I'm looking for Vmax. That's fine. But do I have VRMS? No, I don't. So you're going to have to use a different formula. You might think, okay, I can maybe use one of these formulae because um, this, well, maybe not the first one. Uh, well, it depends. Peak voltage. Maybe I can calculate RMS, and then I can work out resistance. Think about the one that is not on the formula sheet. It's going to be the easiest one to use. So what do they want? They want peak voltage. So remember what I told you. If you have the resistance, you can use V max divided by I max. And what are we looking for? We want peak voltage. There it is. We want V max. Do we have I max? Yes, we do. We were given it. Do we have resistance? Yes, we do. We were given it. So this formula, although it's not on the formula sheet, you are more than welcome to use it. They accept it in final papers. So I would sub into V max. Well, we're looking for V max. Sorry. I would sub into I max, the current, the maximum current, which was given 6,43. And resistance was also given 48,4. So then you simply need to say 48,4 multiplied by 6,43. And I get, according to my calculator, 311,212. Now, because this is physical sciences and the rule is, oh, volts, very important, volts, the rule is you may round off to two decimal places. You can't technically leave it like that. But because my calculator gave it to me as just three decimals, I'm going to just write it as all three decimals. Now, there are other ways to get to the answer. They're much longer, but they will be valid and accepted as long as you follow the procedures correctly of stating all your formulae, substituting and not rounding off in the middle of a question. So what do I mean? Maybe you decide to do the following. Maybe you use IRMS, which you got in the previous question, this value over here, and resistance to calculate power. Then once you've got power, so you, this is your first formula, then you use this formula. You've got power. You've got resistance and you calculate VRMS. Then once you have VRMS, you can use a third formula to calculate Vmax. But that's very long. Why do three formulae when you can get to the answer using one formula? 
then to calculate C, I've carried over my last two answers just so we can see what they are in case I want to use them. Also note, each of these are new questions. So if I want to use an answer from the previous one in the next one, I'm allowed to use the rounded off answer. So in C, it says calculate the average power delivered to the heater. So I'm going to look at these three formulae. Any of them would be okay to use, but I always make sure I try and look for the one that is the easiest. Because I calculated IRMS in the previous question, actually in A, I calculated it in A and this was B's answer. Because I calculated IRMS and I have the resistance, I think it's easiest to use this formula to calculate average power. Remember, when writing down your formula, you have to write it exactly like it says on the formula sheet. So please don't forget the AV, PAV, or don't write it too big because you're going to get a mark deducted. IRMS squared, so that means you take your RMS current, 4,55, and you square it. We are allowed to use a rounded off version here, like I said, because it is a new question. C is a new question, and R, the resistance, is 48,4. And what I get, according to my calculator, is 1,002,001. Remember, your unit for power is watts, just like that. Now, technically, I'm allowed to round that off to two decimals, but I'm just going to leave it like that because that's what my calculator gave me. Join me in other videos in this playlist where I go over past paper questions, so more questions like this, and just other questions to do with electrodynamics in general. Bye, everyone.